After a long search, my choice for displays came down to the LG Ultrafine UL950 and the BenQ DesignView PD3220U. Picking a monitor ended up being way harder than it should have been. So even after plenty of research, there was only one way to truly find out which one was the best for me. To actually buy a bunch and use the monitors and see with my own eyes which is the best. But now I'm happy with the monitors that I found that work best for my setup. So come with me as we go on the journey to see how I got here. The requirements I had for the monitors were 32 inch, 4K, good color accuracy, compatibility with my system, at least 60 Hertz with Thunderbolt connectivity and between one to $2,000. And at first for me, this seemed like it was going to be a simple task, but man, was I wrong. There are plenty of monitors that fit that requirement on paper. But the more I looked, the more I found that there were huge discrepancies between monitors, even within the same brand. There were five monitors that I tried to narrow it down to the last two. The LG Ultrafine 32UL950, the Asus ProArt PA329C, a lower end LG Ultrafine 32UN650, the BenQ DesignView PD3220U, and the Apple Studio Display. And before you ask, no, I didn't even consider the Apple Pro Display XDR for obvious reasons. The Apple Studio Display was more in line with the specs I was looking for in the price range. However, it wasn't 32 inches, but I had to consider it because the actual display is really nice and it's a 5K monitor. So it was on the list, but just as quickly as it got on the list, it was the first to be knocked off for two reasons. The size 27 inches and all the other stuff that was built into it, like the speakers and the webcam. Those were items that I wasn't really interested in and I know I wouldn't use them for my setup. And I felt that the cost of those items were inflating the price of the monitor too much without adding any benefit for me. So lots of monitors with these built-in functions got crossed off the list pretty quickly. All the reviews of the monitors were really positive, but I couldn't find clear answers that were similar to my setup. I do professional video and motion graphic work every day. So I need a quality monitor that is consistent and has great color accuracy, or in my case too, to give me more screen real estate. So I can do work on one monitor while having the script or notes open on the other, as well as email or messaging apps or while editing, have the timeline on one and a large reference on the other. I would say color accuracy and color consistency was top on my list. And ideally I wanted to have the BenQ design view, but the price was so high that it was hard to pull the trigger on two of those without giving the others a good test. And this journey really started when the Asus Pro display went on sale for almost $700 off. The reviews were great with a few people saying that the quality control was a little questionable, but I thought for the price and the discount, I will take a chance and picked it up. And it was super bright with its 600 nits. It felt like it was burning my eyeballs. I like to work in a darker environment, so I had to turn it down to 30% just to match my other monitor. But even still, it felt too bright. And if I was working on a lot of HDR footage, I would need that but it really did feel too bright. And the other thing that annoyed me about the monitor is that it didn't support auto night shift on the display. It couldn't be controlled by the computer. It had to be done manually by using the display and finding the buttons to activate it. This was annoying to me to say the least, especially when you've become used to using the auto night shift that comes with most Macs. And when I have to do any color accurate work, like in photos or in video, I will turn it off. But having it automatic when I'm not doing that kind of stuff is a nice feature. But it being a little bit too bright and having the no auto night shift, those are more annoyances. The biggest problem I had with it was the dead pixels that I had right from the get go, the moment I turned it on. Okay, no problem, I can just exchange it. Though when I finally got the replacement for it, it also had dead pixels. So I didn't want a chance for a third time, so I just returned it and moved on to the other monitors. The BenQ Design View monitor was the one that I was most excited for. This is the monitor that I had my eyes on from the start. It was the one that I wanted to like the most. My biggest hesitation with it was that it's a model that hasn't been updated since 2018. And at the time that I bought it, the model was already five years old. No biggie, good monitors are meant to last. And it had all the features I was looking for, 
in the price range that was right. It has a puck for quick access to the functions, but to be honest, I haven't used it since I set up the monitor, so now it just takes up space on the desk. But the actual panel, the colors, the overall consistency are pretty stellar. There is no noticeable light bleed, it's sharp, and most importantly, it has auto night shift capabilities. It's Thunderbolt, so it allows for easy daisy chaining of other displays or hard drives. It has multiple connection points, even on the side for easy access. I've had this monitor for over a year and it's consistently great. I also like that it's an instant wake monitor. The moment I tap the mouse or the keyboard, the monitor wakes up. It's a really solid display. So top marks for the BenQ. The biggest downside was its price at the time. But even now you can find it for much cheaper than it was selling even a year ago. One thing that keeps this monitor consistent is using a calibration tool to get the most out of the monitor. So regardless of what monitor you end up buying or using, make sure you get a calibration tool. It'll help keep the colors consistent across monitors. The LG Ultrafine Thunderbolt monitor was a wildcard option for me. I had an entry level LG monitor, the LU500, and it was brutal. It flickered with connectivity and sync issues, and it felt washed out. Now, this may have been a Mac Studio specific issue, but it wasn't worth the hassle to try to figure it out, so I just ended up returning it. So when I saw that the higher end LG UL950 was on sale, I was initially hesitant, but it did check all the boxes and the reviews were pretty positive overall. And I was surprised how much I like this monitor compared to the BenQ. It doesn't have as much connectivity options as the BenQ, but its color and brightness are pretty comparable to the BenQ. Especially once you calibrate this monitor, it's pretty much visually comparable to the BenQ. My biggest issue with the LG was the slow wake time compared to the BenQ. Because the BenQ is so fast, it does feel like the LG takes forever to kick in. And when I say forever, I mean like an extra two seconds. But if I had two LGs and they would both come on at the same time, then I don't think I would have noticed it as much. At worst, it's annoying, but definitely not a deal breaker. And if I was to go back knowing what I know now between the BenQ and the LG, I think I would have bought two LGs for the price difference over the BenQ at the time. But I actually think that the BenQ is now cheaper than the LG, but definitely shop around and check which one has the better deal. Now, between these two monitors, they are both great and they have great color consistency and they match very, very well. So going with either one of these would be a fantastic option. I've actually been working with the LG and the BenQ side by side for over a year and they have been consistently great since. I also quickly wanna talk about the LG UN650 monitor. It's a great 32 inch monitor for the price, but it has similar issues with flickering and sync with the Mac Studio but it works great as a third monitor for my streaming and video call specific setup. But that's a whole different topic and video, which you can find right here to see how I've set up my studio to help me be more productive and efficient with work and creating content for YouTube. As always, thanks for watching.